The celebrant of this Mass is Father Jubal. Let us stand and begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends in Christ, 50 days have now passed since we celebrated the great triumphal feast of Easter, the resurrection, the solemnity of Easter. The ancient Jews first celebrated this feast of Pentecost that commemorated the first fruits of the spring harvest, 50 days after Passover. It's always been a feast of great joy and gratitude for the magnificent power of the Lord that's manifest in so many ways. And so today, as Christians, we too recall the gifts of the Holy Spirit to the Church. We begin, however, today with our sprinkling rite. Let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our own baptism. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed that through water the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life, be pleased, we pray, to bless this water, by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you with hearts made clean, and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share the table of his kingdom. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. As we are praying the Vigil Mass this evening, both the prayers and the readings are different from those that are in the bulletin for Pentecost Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed the Paschal Mystery to be encompassed as a sign in 50 days, grant that from out of the scattered nations the confusion of many tongues may be gathered by heavenly grace into one great confession of your name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The whole world spoke the same language, using the same words. While the people were migrating in the east, they came upon a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us mold bricks and harden them in, with fire. They used bricks for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the sky, and so make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered all over the earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the people had built. Then the Lord said, If now, while they are one people, all speaking the same language, they have started to do this, nothing will later stop them from doing whatever they presume to do. Let us then go down there and confuse their language so that one will not understand what another says. Thus the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the speech of all the world. It was from that place that he scattered them all over the earth. The word of the Lord. Spirit and renew the face of 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is groaning in labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now, hope that sees is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way, the Spirit too comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood up and exclaimed, 
Let anyone who thirsts come to me and drink. As scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. He said this in reference to the Spirit that those who came to believe in him were to receive. There was, of course, no Spirit yet, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, the whole world spoke the same language. It was about 16 years ago now when I made at least a valiant effort to learn another language in preparation for, for studying in Rome. And one of my early frustrations in trying to learn a foreign language was that whenever I tried to use it, the gracious Italians simply answered me in English. And that's when you know that you're really botching their language when they answer in English. I even asked one person in a store, why did you answer my question in English when I asked it in Italian? And she responded, because I'm trying to learn English. I said, well, what do you think I'm trying to do? We had a good chuckle over that. But if we're honest, we'll acknowledge that while over one billion people across the world are able to converse in English, maybe not as a primary language, not that many, but certainly they know it as a second language, that doesn't necessarily mean that we really speak the same language of the heart. Those are very different realities. And increasingly, the very idea of being one with others strikes us as aspirational, though unrealistic. The Vigil of Pentecost today challenges us to discover that our unity if left to mere human design, is but an illusion. Only when we turn to the Lord, he who is the source of unity, will we realize the powerful effects of the grace of the Holy Spirit. And so today's solemnity, and we are still in vigil, if you heard the opening prayer, celebrates the gift of the Holy Spirit for which we long to come down to the church. A solemn sign that God has not abandoned us and that God does not abandon his church, but rather guides her throughout the ages. We have an interesting passage in that rather brief gospel today. It's from St. John and it states, Rivers of living water will flow from within him who believes in me. Now, interestingly enough, this isn't an exact quotation from anywhere, either the Old or the New Testament. Now, yes, there are very similar passages. Isaiah chapter 12 speaks of, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And so we can understand that the, the Holy Spirit is guiding the church and even the sacred authors. But that quotation isn't precisely found anywhere. But certainly the idea of the life-giving waters is. But this passage, notice, says, from within him who believes in me. And the word that's used here literally refers to a cavity, not in your tooth, but in your stomach, if you will. That cavity in our belly. And most scholars contend that this passage is referring to him, is referring to Jesus. And so what it's really saying is that we draw spiritual life-giving water deep from within his insides. It's very earthy, but it's very profound. It connotes an intimate relationship with the Lord, that we draw spiritual sustenance, the life-giving water, from deep within his insides, his belly. There's no getting around it. Do we desire that kind of relationship? Do we desire to be close to Jesus? And if so, are we willing to work at it? 
Without water, we will surely die. We know that. Our bodies absolutely depend upon it. They can go without food for much, much longer than we can without water. And if you've ever experienced dehydration, you know this. Fever, digestive issues, nausea, to name but three. The good people at the Mayo Clinic down in Rochester recommend that adults drink somewhere between 92 and 124 fluid ounces a day. That's a lot of liquid. A lot. And yet it's the advice that comes from experts who know through experience. But sometimes people don't realize they are dehydrated. They're outside, they feel fine, they're hiking, and then they collapse. Well, guess what? The same principle applies in the spiritual life. Some people do not realize that spiritually they are drying up. Are you drinking enough spiritually? Pentecost became the church's defining moment following the resurrection because people from all over the known world, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Libya, Rome, they could all hear the Galileans speak in their own tongues the mighty acts of God, and they were astounded. And language, once again, took center stage, just as it had in the account of the Tower of Babel. And it took center stage then because people lacked the language of faith and trust. My brothers and sisters, the real challenge for the apostles was to trust that they were not being abandoned, that in fact the Lord was still very much present. The Holy Spirit is to be sent for our guidance, even as we still make use of all our natural faculties, our intellect, our will. Those are gifts freely given to us, but we need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so in this Vigil Mass, we pray in a special way for that outpouring. And I'd like to add today, in a particular way, to pray for our local church of this archdiocese. Because tonight, at 6 o'clock, the Archbishop will formally convoke our Archdiocesan Synod. I had to chuckle the other day when a letter came out from Rome to all the bishops of the world asking them to engage in a process of diocesan discernment. Just like when the Archbishop called the year St. Joseph, the day that that was to happen, at 5 a.m. that morning, the Pope did the same thing. We just didn't know about it. And then last week, same thing happened again. So I'd like to think we're ahead of the Universal Church in some ways. We're already starting this process. Now every other diocese has to play catch-up ball. But it's an important year. And he kicks it off tonight at St. Bonaventure's in Bloomington. And I ask for your prayers. And as we move into a local phase here in this parish in the fall, I want to plant a seed now that you will participate in small groups. We're going to offer them several different opportunities for the six-week period from mid-September to mid-November. Lots more to follow. But please mark that in your own minds and in your calendars. We want to hear your voice. But also note that before Jesus ever said to the apostles, receive the Holy Spirit, he said, peace be with you, twice. He wants us to feel secure and not to be troubled. Jesus was letting the disciples go slowly but surely. They were now able to forge out on their own. Now they would wait on God's word through prayer and discernment. Pentecost is a powerful reminder that God's care and concern for his people crosses all boundaries of language, race, nationality, or age. He speaks to us all in his own way and in his own time. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Spirit of God unites us and enables us to pray for the needs of others. Drawn together in God's love, we offer our prayers to the Father. For the Church throughout the world, may she be a beacon of hope, leading people to faith, hope, and eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the growth of a culture of life in our nation, may the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, Inspire us to welcome the stranger, feed the poor, and cherish every life, both born and unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For greater peace in the Twin Cities. Following recent violence in the Twin Cities, may a spirit of calm descend upon our neighborhoods as we strive to build a more cohesive society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for solidarity among all people. May we foster peace in the midst of strife and value each other as members of one human family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Blessed Mother's humble obedience to the Holy Spirit will inspire the same in all the laity and clergy of our archdiocese as the synod process begins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, may they and all the faithful departed know the glory of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, you sent your Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, to guide the church. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Cathedral Parish is dependent upon the financial support of her cherished parishioners and many welcome guests. On the Cathedral website, there is a button from which to donate electronically, and there is a QR code in the Parish Bulletin. Or you may place your offering in any of the four drop boxes located at the Selby and Dayton entrances. We thank you for your generosity.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Pour out upon these gifts the blessing of your spirit, we pray, O Lord, so that through them your church may be imbued with such love that the truth of your saving mystery may shine forth for the whole world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Paul and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Just a brief reminder again that communion is distributed section by section. For those who prefer to receive communion on the tongue, we simply invite you to come forward to the center aisle where both options are available on either side of the aisle. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Factus est repente, de celo sonus, adveniente spiritus ementis, ubi eran Say 
Let us pray. May these gifts we have consumed benefit us, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same Spirit whom you wondrously poured out on your apostles. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few brief announcements today. We've been gradually reintroducing congregational singing. You notice we had a longer procession today as we now have reinstituted our opening him. So thank you for your continued patience as we slowly but surely uh, get back to some sense of normalcy. Beginning next week, uh, you'll see most of the gold ropes will be removed and the spacing protocols are no longer in effect. It does remain helpful for communion flow, however, to have people still spread throughout uh, the width of the church. So that still has been very helpful. I'd like to encourage you to, uh, to follow that. I mean, as always, I invite you to take a bulletin home, and we thank you for your continued and generous support of the cathedral. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. No!